Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess, confess our, our sins, sins God, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our sins, sins and, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the, For the sake, sake of your, of your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy on us, us forgive us, us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let, Let me, me hear, hear what, what God, God the Lord, Lord will, will speak. speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely, Surely his, his salvation, salvation is near to those who fear him, him. That, that glory may dwell in our land. land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness, Righteousness and, and peace kiss, kiss each, each other. other. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, the beginning is, now, is now, and will and be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant, grant us your salvation. salvation. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on I be glory and peace to all the earth. 
goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you also be gotten, the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated, at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name and nourish us with all goodness that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is found in 1 Kings, chapter 19, beginning with verse 9. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of, the hosts, of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks and the pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hasael as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi as king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Meloah, you shall anoint his prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hasael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelve. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done, what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. We continue with Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. 
the sorrows of those who run after another god shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their name on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lions have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I invite the children to come forward for the message. Good morning, girls. We'll sing the... The banner for me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his. His banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his. His banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Seats me at the banqueting table. He seats me at his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He seats me at his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He seats me at his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. One more verse. He is the vine and we are his branches. His banner over me is love. He is the vine and we are his branches. His banner over me is love. He is the vine and we are his branches. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Nice job, girls. Please be seated. His banner over me is love. And there's a big heart on our bulletin cover that you might have seen already. That's where God is. He loves us. He loved us so much that even though we haven't loved Him perfectly with our hearts, He forgives us our sins. And I have something to help us remind us how we've been set free from our sins. First of all, I have some fruit in here. I have an apple. And the apple reminds us, yeah, you like apples? Don't eat it yet, though. That uh, our, our first fathers, they ate the apple or the fruit of the, forbidden, of, the, of the tree that they weren't supposed to eat. And because of that, there's sin in the world. But guess what? Jesus came and, and we who were in, our, in the chains of sin, He broke the chains and He freed us. We are free from sin and from death and the devil. And now He's given us this great love that we eat as we believe in Jesus and convinces our hearts. And not only that, we're now freed to bear fruit. He's the vine, we are the branches. And on this, this piece of fruit, I, I have a heart there to remind us that we've been freed now to show love to one another. Bear fruit. As we're connected to Jesus, He gives us His love so that we love others. That's what it is to be a Christian. We're freed to love. We, we, we must love, not because we are going to be saved, but because that's what God wants us to do as His new, new people. So... Go now with His love that you've been loved and serve one another. All right. Our epistle reading continues in Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is present in those who belong to Christ Jesus, as we just heard in our children's message. Begins in verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke 
a bondage. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. But the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, riot, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I've told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be, to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and set messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are, are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Oh. Uh. 
brightly shine to joy and gladness wake us that we Praise to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this third Sunday after Pentecost is from our epistle reading, Galatians 5, verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Here ends our text through love. How many times in our hymns this morning, in our readings, has that word love been mentioned as we just sang? To joy and gladness wake us that we may be truly living to you, giving prayer and ceasing, and in love still be increasing. By the power of Christ, we therefore, out of love to our neighbor, show his love, which he has first given to us, Last week we spent a good amount of time on chapters 3 and 4 of Galatians. That was our epistle reading. For in these chapters, Paul laid the foundations of the heart of Christianity, of Christ's love for us, that he gave his life for us, became a curse for us. And through faith in Jesus, we have sonship, adoption, as sons and daughters of Christ, a gift from God. As we heard last week, for you are all sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. This is the foundation of the Christian faith. Faith through Jesus Christ, the gift of, of salvation. Paul taught us that it is a gift, our sonship and our daughtership. It is created by the Holy Spirit. As we heard again in our, in our epistle text, you have been called to liberty. Nothing that we could do, God calls us to faith by through His Word. We are freed from the imprisonment of the law by the promise of faith in Jesus. As we heard last week again, but the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. The promise given to Abraham and to his descendants who also believe like Abraham to Aden and to, to
to Mark and to Brianna who confessed this faith last week and to all of us confirmed in the faith and, and steadfast in the love of Christ this promise of our salvation our eternal inheritance could only be given to us the how because Jesus himself became a curse under the law as we heard last week again in Galatians 3 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And again, we heard last week, this is, again, a quick review, that Paul even chastised the Galatians at the beginning of chapter 3, who has bewitched you, you foolish Galatians? He says this in exasperation. No, no, no. It is, faith is given to you. It is a gift, not by works of the law. So Abraham believed. And so we too, as sons of Abraham, also believe. There is no Jew, no Gentile, no, no slave, nor free, no, no male, nor female. We heard in Galatians 3, 28. But all are one in Christ Jesus. And if you're Christ and you're Abraham, seeds and, and also heirs according to the promise. Pure gospel. No distinction God makes for all people. These are the, the, the foundations of the Christian faith. And Paul begins our epistle reading for today in chapter 5 with a quick reminder, doesn't he? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. This liberty that we have in Christ. By which Christ has made us free. And don't be entangled again in, with a yoke of bondage. No. Why would you want to go back to slavery that you have to think that you can be saved by the works of the law? By the beggarly things, the weak things that, that Paul mentions in chapter 4 of observing days and, and feasts and seasons and years. These were just a shadow of the, of the true rest that is found in Christ Jesus. Rest for our conscience that he has fulfilled the law. Basically, don't let anyone tell you you're sinning if, you, if they tell you you better not eat meat on Fridays. No, these are just man-made laws thrust upon us to enslave you again and take away your freedom from the gospel. So in the opening verses of this chapter 5, Paul is telling, telling those Galatians, don't let the Judaizers convince you that you have to have to be saved through the works of the law, that you have to be circumcised, that, that you have to, have to be following all the, the, the precepts of the ceremonial laws. No. You're free in Christ. And Paul even goes so far as to say, and those who teach his false teaching, let them be castrated. That's how, that's how serious Paul is about this. No, no, no. We're saved by faith without the law. That is the first danger to think that, that we can somehow contribute to our salvation. But the second danger of which Paul then goes on to, to especially tell us about this day from Galatians 5 is that as sons and daughters of God that you th would think or believe that you are freed from the works of the law. That you're freed from living the new life that you're called to live that you can do whatever you want. Sin. For you, for you are freed and that, that, that grace abounds. No. Faith saves without the works of the law, but it is never alone. Luther said, works of the law are the fruit of the faith of the new person. The Christian who goes to the opposite extreme and says, I don't have to do any works of the law because, well, I'm good. God, God saved me. Or even think that I can continue sin sinning, do whatever I please, is very confused and is in extreme spiritual peril. Paul adds on these, these specific sins in our epistle reading to the list of things that Christians should completely avoid. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, and the like. It goes on and on, on and on. We can fill in the blanks, of course. Too many works for the sinful flesh to enumerate. 
yes, faith is, ne is, without, is, is never without the works of love. And so our conscience is freed so that we do not commit these sins and we are obligated not to commit them. We are obligated to indeed love our neighbor as ourselves. We are obligated by the law as sons of God to fulfill the law. This is the third use of the law. They all flow from the love of Christ that is in us, who has first loved us. For the fruit of the law of the Spirit is, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit that he gives to us through faith. And in, in each Christian, there is this battle going on, this war that is being waged between the new spirit and our sinful flesh that we would follow after the sinful flesh and not the spirit. There are so many opportunities in our lives to, to show love and faithfulness and kindness and, and peace and goodness to others. And we are all guilty of not doing those things, of in fact doing nothing. We are obligated by the law to love our neighbor perfectly, to serve others first as Christ has served us. Paul goes on to say that the, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you wish. This battle wages in, in each of us. Yes, there are many examples in our own lives of this battle that's going on. But I want to focus especially this week on a battle that, is, that has been going on for 50, almost 50 years now in the public domain. And we had a momentous event happen this past week, as you all know, that the Supreme Court ruled that Roe versus Wade is not constitutional and cannot be upheld by the Constitution. That the federal government cannot, government cannot make legal abortion of babies. Finally, this was overturned after much patience and, and, and long suffering and steadfastness by, by many who have fought to, to overturn this, this, this ruling of Roe versus Wade. And now it's sent back to the state so that they can now limit abortions. This is all about loving your neighbor as yourself, isn't it? For the mantra of the pro-abortionist activist is just this. A woman has a right to control her own body. Yes, we are obligated by the law to control our bodies, don't, aren't we? <laughs> and that means not to commit adultery, not to commit fornication, uncleanness which could result in pregnancy. That's obvious, Paul says. The works of the flesh are evident. And Paul goes on to say that I told you as, as in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It is a serious danger if a Christian believes that he or she has a new freedom to live however one wants and to sin however one wants. You'll lose your inheritance. You'll suffocate your faith. Back to the pro-abortion mantra. My body, my life. Well, first of all, there are two bodies. Two lives. The body of the mother and the body of the baby. The life of the baby, which has a heartbeat as early as 15 days after conception. In the mother's womb, it is not just a lump of cells, but a distinct human being of whom the father and the mother are obligated to love as oneself. In the mother's womb is her neighbor to love as Christ has loved her. She and the Father must show love, kindness, peace, joy, gentleness, long-suffering, faithfulness, goodness to this growing child. Is this an inconvenience to one's personal plans? This pregnancy, sometimes unexpected? Well, maybe, possibly. Yes, the works of the sinful flesh include obviously selfish ambitions and murder. If one says that I can kill this life because it disrupts my plans, 
to study or travel or have independence to do what I want to do, one is indeed following the sinful flesh. And if one doesn't repent and receive forgiveness from Christ, then the inheritance is indeed lost and one will spend an eternity in hell. No, 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 Paul says. We are not free to break the law, but are obligated to keep and walk by the Spirit. We are not obligated to use, to not use our, our, own, our new liberty for our own selfish interests, but to serve one another, to serve the, the little baby formed in your womb. Oh, this we apply in many, many ways, not just to babies, but to all the different neighbors in our own lives. As we heard in our gospel reading, the, the disciples were going through Samaria. And the Samaritans wouldn't receive them because they were going to Jerusalem when the Samaritans had difficulty with the Jews. And so they respond, well, let's just call down fire on them. <laughs> no, that's not the spirit you've been given, Christ says. You've been given the spirit of love and compassion and gentleness and faithfulness and, and long-suffering. And, and God is a God of mission. He wants all men to be saved. We need to be patient and continue to come to all sinners with the love of Christ. As we sang in our, in our verse, by, by your teaching, Christ's teaching, by our preaching and our labor, that includes all of us, all our labor, the disciples, each of us, our preaching, our sharing of, of law and gospel, that, that glory would be shown and that people would come to faith, that we would praise you, Lord, and serve our neighbor. Yes, we see our failures often. We have not done this perfectly, loved one another. We are humbled, therefore, by the law often many times, and again, fall upon the good news of the gospel that we have been freed of our sins. Through faith, we have been forgiven completely. Not by the works of the law, but by the work of Christ. Jesus has saved us and freed us from hell by his death and resurrection, and he has freed us now to live a new life in service to one another. We are free and then also obligated to love one another and to proclaim his marvelous works we are obligated to love our neighbors as much as that, that we are willing to go the extra mile to make sure that they know of Jesus and don't spend an eternity in hell. That is what it is to be a Christian, to have the, the mind, the mission of Christ in our hearts and His love. Yes, we think about our freedoms in our country this July the 4th. We give thanks to God for the highest freedom or for, that we have in our country, the political freedom. And, and the earthly freedoms we enjoy, but the greatest, highest freedom of all is freedom from sin and from death and the devil and the new liberty we have. The liberty that as we've been loved to love one another in service to one another, that we put on Christ daily. As we heard last week, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise. Precepts, Lord, fulfill and do on earth our Father's will as angels do above. Still walk in Christ the living way with all thy children and obey the law of Christian. Thy grace adore thy power.
are confessed from sin and strive to flee. What is our calling? What our name? The end of all our hopes the same. A crown of life with thee. Spirit of life, of love and peace, unite our hearts, our joy increase. Thy gracious help supply to each of us the blessing give in Christian fellowship to live in joyful hope to die. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have created us in your image and called us into fellowship with your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to know that you are always with us, guiding our steps, providing for our lives, hearing our prayers, and answering us in ways that are for your, our good and that bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your presence in our lives. You reign over all the universe as King of kings and Lord of lords. In you, Lord Jesus, all things are held together. In you, Lord Jesus, we live and move and have our being. You provide well for all those who belong to you. Grant us hearts to receive your word, hands to extend your love to others, and feet to walk by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your provision in our lives. Holy Spirit, we feel lost and alone. When we feel lost and alone, remind us of your never-failing love. Instill in us the readiness to be led by you in the purpose that you give to all who follow Christ Jesus. Send your church out into every corner of the world to proclaim the good news of life and salvation in our Savior's death and resurrection until the day he comes again. Grant that we never grow tired of sharing the gospel with our neighbors and especially we pray that we, we would have the opportunities to share the gospel to those newly born children, to bring them to faith through baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer and receive our thanks for your purpose in our lives. Merciful Lord, we pray your blessing upon all who lead and govern us, for all who protect us from harm and danger, for all who work for the well-being of our communities, our state, and our nation. Grant that your presence and provision be, may, be known in our families and in the lives of our children. Remind those who are homebound, hospitalized, or ailing in any way that they are never alone, for you are always with them. And grant your healing mercies especially to, to Gail and to Carolyn and to Mary and Mildred, to Loretta and Jesus and Erlene and Vincent and Connie and Renee and Melly. We pray also for for Harriet, we pray for my mother, and we continue to pray for all of Roseanne's family, for Mario, and for Vivian, and the little baby Mario, and for all of Olivia's family, and her children, and, and for Ralph. We ask that you help them through their sicknesses and, and grant them healing. We ask that this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. And to your faithful hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all those for whom we pray, trusting, ever trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you 
and give you peace. Amen. Amen. us with your blessing, fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each your love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way, let not fear of death appall us, glad your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you to an endless day. Oh, oh, oh.